Hey guys, I'm gonna run you through how I get my rifles sighted in and ready to go for hunts. So what happened on this rifle, this is my seven millimeter. I actually had a wreck with this rifle. It was strapped on a backpack and that backpack rolled downhill. I mean, it was like a very drastic, pretty intense uh, situation for the rifle. And after that, it started grouping out inch and a half, sometimes two inches. So what I did is I remounted the, the scope. I worked on a couple other things on the rifle and I've got it back to shooting MOA, but now, I've got a hunt in three or four days that I'd like to use this gun and caliber for. I've got an Oryx hunt. So I've got to get a set of ammo set up for the rifle. And uh, I'll show you how I do that. I actually find it very difficult nowadays to reload. I just can't find all the components. I can't order them uh, readily. And then what happens is I reload a bunch and then I can't find that powder. And I, so I can't reload more. So I'm always changing things. So I've actually been using quite a bit of factory ammo lately. So I've got two different types of factory ammo um, that I'm gonna try and we'll see if they group any different. It'll be interesting. But I do a couple things. So first, when I'm gonna um, sight in with my rifle, I've got a 100 yard target out. I actually take my scope and I take it down to some of the lower magnification points, right? So I might shoot at 10 or eight, even if it goes up to 15. That takes out any issues with parallax uh, that you might run into. But even, you've obviously got time to adjust the parallax here. But even outside of that, I just find it easier on my eye if I shoot at kind of mid-range magnification at the 100 yards. The second thing that I do is I always keep the torque specs on this little uh, right in the rain notepad. It's always in my shooting bag or shooting mat. And it's got all my torque specs for my ring, my ring screws, my base screws. If I've got a pick rail that's got like the bolts, um, it'll have uh, it'll have the uh, torque, torque uh, for that. And then I have the stock uh, torque spec. So I'll do all that. I'll make sure the rifle is torqued all correctly. I just use one of these fat wrenches. You know, one tip is always keep the wrench relieved, always relieve all the torque uh, every time you use it. They say they remain more accurate if you do that. What I ran into with these Tikas, this is a T3 uh, stainless uh, model. What I found with them is the barrels get super hot. I mean, I'm talking within two or three shots. You, if you shoot two or three shots within five, six minutes, you're gonna notice that third shot starts to open up in the group. At least that's what I've no noticed with these rifles. And I've noticed that it's not really correlated too much to like touching the barrel. I used to do that and be like, oh, it's not hot. Well, it turns out that it is hot inside there. I don't know why it's so finicky, but these small, you know, lightweight barrels on these guns, they for sure start to widen your group after two or three shots if you're not careful. So when I'm testing out ammo or getting my gun sighted in, I always wait like three, four, five minutes, uh, even on a cool day. Today's not too bad, it's probably 70 degrees. But even if it's colder than that, I'll wait five minutes between shots just so I don't have to redo this constantly and constantly. So I'll have you guys follow along. I'm gonna throw on a camera onto the spotter so we can get a close up view of how this gun's grouping. I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm actually gonna shoot one, uh, you know, one round from uh, one type of ammo, wait five minutes, shoot the other, then, then just kind of rotate back and forth, right? And we'll see how they group. I'll shoot top left one ammo, uh, or excuse me, I'll shoot bottom left one ammo, bottom uh, right one ammo, and we'll just figure out how they're grouping. They're not gonna group, you know, right where the bullseye is obviously because this isn't the ammo that the gun is currently sighted into. So we'll get a nice grouping with both, figure out which one we like, and then we'll adjust our optic to be zeroed in uh, where we want it to be on that uh, uh, on on the scope here, and then the last thing I'll do before I leave, I won't be worrying about the target. I'm not trying to do multiple things at one time. The last thing I'll do is the ammo I choose. I will run it through the chronograph real quickly, just so I can get a muzzle velocity, and then I can make my ballistic, ballistic card off of that muzzle muzzle velocity, in addition to where I choose to sight in impact at 100 yards. I generally, you know, roughly with these type of mountain calibers, you know, two inches high at 100 is gonna get you right in the kind of sweet spot. Um, it doesn't, it actually really doesn't matter what you choose, but generally if you're like two inches high at 200, that's gonna give you a lot of room to dial in plenty of elevation at, you know, ethical shot distances. Um, and it's gonna give you that, that space from, you know, 100 or 50 yards up to 200 yards where you don't really have to worry about dialing in or holding elevation, right? You can just shoot an animal at those uh, yardages. So that's kind of why people choose that sweet spot of two inches high at 100. I like to torque my scope in a crisscross pattern. Probably doesn't honestly matter that much. 
And then now I'm going to do something fairly controversial, but I do it because I do notice that tikas, if you over torque this forearm, they start to widen. I don't know why that is, but they do. So the spec on that bolt is 40. So to make sure I truly get it at 40, these two bolts, this bolt and this bolt, I'll actually back them out. And then I'll tighten them up. All right, so I do that every time. Not everybody's gonna agree with that. All right, and then like I said, always run my torque wrench out when I'm done. One thing you guys are gonna notice that I do is I dry fire my gun. So I dry fire my gun before and after every shot that I take when I'm sighting in. Bottom left, these are burger, federal burger, 168 grain. Looks like half inch high. Go ahead and dry fire my gun again. Now the, the grueling part is just out of habit and being consistent, I'm gonna let that barrel cool for four or five minutes and we'll, we'll see how it goes. And just to know guys, I think it's important that you do this, is when you set up your range, particularly if it's not at like an actual range, you know, you might not end up setting up right at 100 yards. You might be at 93 yards or 106 yards. Make sure you write that down. It's not gonna make an enormous amount of difference when you do your ballistics, but you might as well do it. It's easy to do it. Just get your range finder out and check your range. I check this from right here, you know, right where the optic is to that uh, target, it's 99 yards. But a lot of times I shoot at 90 or I'll shoot at 85, I'll shoot at 115, but it doesn't matter because I can adjust that for my ballistics. But a lot of people forget to do that. They just put in 100 and that's not quite right. If you're gonna do all this work, you might as well you know, do it, do it right. So that's one thing I do is I put the date, put my yards that I'm actually shooting at. Bottom right, these are Remington core lock tip, 150 grain. Looks like two inches high, roughly, maybe half inch left. One thing nice about filming it is you can't cheat, right? You can't cheat and want to shoot faster than you should, you know, let that barrel cool down uh, nicely. Bottom left, this is back to the burger 168 grains. Looks like half inch, maybe three quarter inch high next to the other hole. Bottom right hand target, Remington 150 grain, quarter lock tip. Uh, inch and a half high, right next to the other one. We're going to do our dry fire process. All right, now give it five minutes and we'll start on our third round. And just a note, guys, in this situation, I'm actually getting fairly reasonable groups that are in line in, ter in terms of horizontal. They've just got different elevation uh, changes, which is nice. Sometimes you'll get bullets like that, right? The different bullets in the different rounds that you're trying, they basically have the same point of impact. It's just, it's just the weight of the bullets that's changing that elevation up and down or the you know ballistic coefficient of the shape of the bullet, but it's not swinging them off left or right or whatever. Sometimes you'll see that. You can have the same grain bullet, uh, you know, in the same caliber and just the shape of that bullet or it's made from a different manufacturer or whatever, it'll have a different point of impact left to right. In this case, it's nice because I've got 
both types of rounds and corresponding bullets are hitting on the same, you know, the same vertical line, right? So the horizontal is set, which is nice because what I can do in this situation is I can actually zero zero the gun for both rounds because they're just grouping, you know, an inch and a half high and then the the one uh, round is an inch high. I'm probably going to leave those groups where they're at and I'm just going to adjust my ballistics for each one of them. In that way, I actually have this rifle set up for both types of ammunition. In today's day when you can't always get the type of ammunition that you want and the exact type of ammunition from the store is not there so you've got to go out searching, it's nice to have your rifle set up for different types of ammo right from different manufacturers because that means now I'm going to not adjust uh, anything on the scope uh, in terms of the uh, the reticle, all I'm going to do is go down, measure my groups, and then get a velocity, a muzzle velocity on both rounds, okay? And then I'll end up with two different ballistics charts, and depending on what round I'm using, I can just keep those in my little pouch here, or tape them on here, or whatever, but I'll have the gun set up for both rounds. That's pretty nice to have that situation. You're not always going to get that. Not all the time are you going to have those, those bullets lined up vertically where both rounds are hitting you know dead center okay slightly to the right surely could have been me we're still looking at we're still looking at an MOA group you know a lot of times uh, when I shoot I actually there's a little rock here uh, not to make excuses but I didn't feel perfect on that shot to be honest with you so I'm not surprised I was slightly off the gun's still shooting uh, basically at one, one inch, one MOA, so I'm not unhappy with it. There's a nice group uh, for, for this, uh, this uh, round here. So we're done with that round until we get a muzzle vo velocity. So I'll set that to the side. We'll let our gun cool down for a moment and we'll get our other round. Bottom right hand target. Right there, probably me also. <clears throat> but we're right in that one MOA range. So let's go down there and measure them so we have exact measurements for our ballistics. All right, so looking at the two groups here, this is the Federal group. This is the Remington group, the 150 grain bullets. These are the 168 grain bullets. You can see that those groups are roughly one inch. Okay. That one, is, that one would be technically a little bit over an inch. So not quite MOA, but that's probably me, not the rifle. That one's right at MOA. All right, so we're good on that front. So the next thing we want to measure for our ballistics software is we want to measure from the exact spot we were aiming. So right in the middle of the red to the center of the group. We're looking at right at one inch right at one inch for the federal group for the remington group we're looking at a little bit over two inches i'd call that 2.2 2.1 2.2 all right so i wrote that i write that down on my notes here one inch is high on that round 2.2 inches high on that round. So all we need now is muzzle velocity. Okay, so now we're gonna speed test these two uh, these two rounds, chronograph them. So first I'm gonna start with the uh, Remington, the 150 grain. Just gonna tuck, chuck, just gonna chuck two rounds through this chronograph uh, right here. Um, no need to be slow about it. I'll just stick two through there and get two speeds and I'll write them down here. Let's just see what the box says. I'm just curious what it says they're gonna shoot. So these guys are claiming a muzzle vo velocity of 3130. So let's see what we get. And basically this is like seven yards and I'll put that in my ballistics calculator too. Again, it's not gonna make hardly difference at all, but I'll write that on here. 2923. 2962. Quite a bit of difference in velocity there. So I'll shoot one more. 2892. Man, all over the place. 
it'll be interesting to see if our other ammo shoots a tighter velocity band. All right, so now the Federal Burger 168s. Two, eight, nine, eight. Let's see what this box says we're gonna get. It actually says 2870. So, so far, so good. These guys aren't overestimators. 2930. <clears throat> 2886. 2886. So, that's pretty close to what they're, they're saying. They're saying 2870. All right, guys, so at this point, we've done all the steps, we retorqued everything. We've, uh, we've got where our groups are at. We've got our muzzle velocity. Now all we gotta do is chart up our ballistic charts and we're ready to go hunting. All right guys, so the last step in this process, actually putting our ballistics onto the rifle. So what I did was I took my right in the rain uh, pad here. I've got all the notes from when I shot. Date, that right there, 99 yards is what I sighted in at. There's how far my chrono was when I got muzzle velocities. Left is just identifying what target I was shooting at on my uh, my sheet out there. This is the round Federal Burger 168 green, grain. The group is one inch high. These are my muzzle, my three muzzle velocities that I got off the chronograph. Here's the other round. It's 150 grain Remington round. It's it's grouping 2.2 inches high, and those are my muzzle velocities. So that's all I need to get my ballistics charts ready to rock. Oh yeah. The only thing I did was on this other round, round the uh, Remington, the Remington round. I actually went out and shot it a few more times through the chronograph, just because I was so surprised by how much variance there was in the velocities, and it continued to be that way. It tightened up a little bit. My best guess is that chronograph was having some variability because it was so sunny that day, and the accuracy and just the effectiveness of those devices is actually better on a cloudy day. Still, the velocity differences shot to shot, you know, it varied sometimes 50 feet, 60 feet uh, per second, which is a ton of variability, right? You know, most factory ammunition, you can, you should be able to get premium factory ammunition that's, you know, has got a variance of 20 to 35 feet per second. Um, and then if you're reloading, a lot of times you can get 20 feet per second or, or even less variance between shots when you're chronographing them. But anyways, I just did that to get, just to make sure it wasn't my, uh, my measuring system or anything, but essentially I got to the same number in terms of an average for muzzle velocity. But other than that, I just have all my information here. I plug it in to just a basic ballistics app on my phone. And then what I did was <clears throat> I printed out two different cards. Okay, for the two different rounds. Now, when I'm going to do the uh, round that I'm going to shoot, the burger, the burger bullet round, and that's the federal round here, I'm going to go ahead and set that to the side. And then what I'm, what I'm going to do here with the uh, other round, because I've got the gun um, all sighted in for that round too with the ballistics, I'm just going to take one of the boxes of ammunition. I always buy at least two boxes of all the ammo that I think is gonna work for my uh, rifle. That way I have it on hand. I've got two boxes of this. I'm gonna take the one open box and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that card down in there. If something were to happen ammo wise or I just wanted to shoot that weight bullet or 
Who knows why um, I've got that in there and I don't have to go through the whole process of printing it out again or, or whatever. So in a perfect world, what I do is I go on this side of the rifle and I put it on the butt of my gun right here. So basically as I get ready for the shot, I can just pull it up, look at the ballistics there. In this case, I use this little cheek pad on this rifle, so I'm not gonna put it there. And then my second uh, choice is to put it right here. Again, the problem with this rifle is there's limited space there. I have to make this so small um, that it, it's so small, the uh, numbers, that it's a pain to actually see them for me. So this is too small of a spot. And the other thing this stock has, it has texture. So a lot of times when I tape um, ballistics cards down to the rifle, it doesn't want to stick. And it doesn't really matter what kind of tape you use. It's just, it's always going to peel off. So what I do is I just take packing tape like I did here, and I just cover one side completely I'm basically showing you a, a ghetto way to laminate the thing and it's not really to like you know to save the thing or whatever from wear and tear it's really just so when I have it in this pouch right here here it's easy for me to pull it out so I'll have that here and then this isn't the best because I'd love to just be able to see it, but I can, I can unzip this fairly quickly on a shot. Look at my range, holds, boom, dial it in, good to go. The other thing I'll do is generally what I'll do is I'll roughly know the lower range holds. So I'll know at 150, I'll know at 200, I'll know at 300, I'll know at 350 kind of by heart. Beyond that, I'll depend on this um, because those shots, I'm going to have time anyways. I'm not going to take those unless I do have a bunch of time, so I don't mind doing that. But I'll memorize those, those baseline ones. All right, and then what I'll do for my hunting setup is I'll take this ammo that I have the ballistic card set up. I'll put a couple extra rounds here, and then I'll load the two clips I have for this rifle with that round, the detachable clips, and then my little uh, ammo pouch on my uh, bino harness, I'll load it up too with this ammo. So. Any seven millimeter ammo that I have around is this exact load. So if I'm scrambling for a bullet for some reason or whatever, I grab a load that I have the ballistics for, all right? So that's key. Just swap out all the ammo that's out there with your new round so you're not, you don't end up with an old, old round that you don't have the ballistics for in the gun. So here's the shot from here. We think we're good. Confident, right, Dave? Confident. <laughs> Good deal. Awesome hunt. It's beautiful. So guys, that's the whole process. I hope you found that useful. You know, if you guys have any tips and tricks that I didn't cover here, leave them in the comments so you can help everybody out. But guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys.